on today's Apple Daily. New hardware expected next week from Apple, Snapdragon 888 versus Apple A14, and answering your questions. For the latest Apple news, rumors, and leaks, every weekday at 12 UTC, join us in the iCave. Thanks, Siri. And if you want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing, and you'll get a shout out at the end of the next video. Hey guys, just a quick preface for today's video. I'm just editing it now, and I'm looking at myself, and I look absolutely shattered in the video. My eyes are half asleep. And uh, the reason is I was basically half asleep when I was filming this because the night before I had had a big pro uh, project I'd had to finish off for work, video editing project, uh, followed by my uh, youngest son being awake pretty much the whole night. I managed to achieve a perfect 24 hour stand record on my Apple Watch just before filming this. So apologies if I look knackered, it's because I was. New hardware expected next week from Apple. According to an internal Apple memo, Apple are likely to release some form of new hardware on December the 8th. This is based on information released to Apple service providers and lines up with similar releases in the recent past. Set for 5.30am Pacific time, it's thought to possibly include new product SKUs, new or updated product descriptions and new or updated pricing. This kind of information goes out to Apple service providers and anyone that looks after Apple Care stuff, so it tends to be more for hardware than software. While it seems unlikely that without a full event we would see something entirely new like AirTags, it could be something updated like AirPods, Apple TV, although I do doubt that we'll get an update on that before next year, or heaven forbid some sort of Intel Mac that is just lying around and they forgot to release before. Basically anything that Apple would be willing to release a little more quietly via a press release. That being said, reviewers might already have devices that they are reviewing ready to all go live together. Perhaps they're doing a social media based launch instead of one of their own events. Apple could just be trying something different here and still releasing a more major product with a digital event, but without just giving us the week's notice that we've had for the last three events. That's the thing with digital events, you can kind of just drop them and the world will stop anyway if your name is Apple. So what do you think? I would love to hear in the comments below what you think Apple might be dropping next week on Tuesday. Let me know. And Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon benchmarks. This week Qualcomm announced the Snapdragon 888. Uh, Snapdragon is arguably the gold standard amongst Android devices so let's see how it stacks up against A14 in the latest Apple devices and anything else that's similar. The 888 talks about big numbers. It's got 8 cores, 25% faster CPU than the last generation and 35% faster GPU than the last generation, which we won't dive too deep into here because we haven't got any numbers on the GPU at the minute, or at least anything that's comparable to what we have for the A14, but we do have some CPU numbers. Now, with any system on a chip, they are a little bit different from just looking at like an Intel processor, which is just a, a case of how much stuff can it process. These SOCs have got a lot of onboard tech, like image signal processors, um, this can do the 10-bit colour that the A14 can do, it can do 120 frames a second at 12 megapixels, it can do a whole bunch of other stuff like that, so expect that it's actually going to perform pretty well. So the Snapdragon 888 scores a single core score of 1135 and a multi-core of 3681, which puts it right around the A12 from 2018 on single core, but in multi-core it sits right between the A13 and A14. Now the difference here is that it's an 8 core chip instead of a 6 core chip in the A14 and these 8 cores are distributed as 1 680 prime, 3 cryo 680 performance cores and 4 cryo 680 efficiency cores versus the A14's 6 core design with 4 ice storm efficiency and 2 firestorm performance cores but it still beats the Snapdragon on both counts because those cores themselves are so much more powerful. So the 888 sounds like it's actually a really great chip and it will be really interesting to see what the Android manufacturers will do with it going forward, but it looks like Apple is still on top in the uh, individual chip game just for now. And then iCave answers. This question comes through from a new member of the Notification Squad, X. Uh, I think we mentioned him a couple of episodes ago um, that he is just called X, that's it. And X asks, in what time frame do you think we can expect Apple to reach and begin to exceed the performance of the highest spec Windows gaming PCs? We're talking 4K, 240Hz on the best games uh, on the highest settings as the benchmark to beat. These are the machines that are 
pounds plus maybe M4 or M5. So this is an interesting one because uh, Apple is already kind of beating on certain aspects and I think once we get into the Mac Pros and things like that it will certainly have the power to do that. The difficulty will be whether the AAA game makers are also supporting those games on Apple Silicon because if we're having to run it through Rosetta we're going to take maybe a 30% cut in performance purely just by running it through that translation layer. Now in a lot of apps it doesn't make too much difference but in games where you're counting frames per second and things like that it does make a bit of a difference. Uh, now I would say there's a few things here that matter and a few things that don't. So 240 hertz refresh rates is kind of overkill. Um, the human eye as a whole has a refresh rate of about 75 hertz so once you actually get past that past the 90 and 120 hertz you're not really going to gain a huge amount because the human eye is slightly weird it has a variable refresh rate across different parts so uh, you also can only see in real detail in a very small area something slightly larger than the size of the moon in the sky at night um, if you're interested by the way in how the human eye compares to a camera Go and check out a, a video from the Corridor Crew guys, which I think they were saying, it, it's called something like Human Spec Camera. Um, but I will put a link just up here so you guys can check that video out. Corridor Crew do some amazing stuff and it's definitely worth checking their stuff out. Um, but in terms of other stuff than that, I think we are going to see probably ProMotion coming to the max, which they might do a ProMotion Pro or you know a higher level going forward that goes into the higher performing stuff that goes up to that 240 hertz but again can drop it right down so if you're sitting there reading a web page that's static it could drop down to one to five or ten hertz um, which will save huge amounts of power and this is one of the things that Apple has been doing a really good job of. Uh, I was just watching the Max Tech Reviews uh, video where they mentioned if, they, if Apple were to double the GPU cores uh, from the M1 to the M one X up to a 16 core graphics processor we would be looking at a score somewhere around 14,000 which is also in the range of the uh, AMD 5600 graphics cards which is pretty pretty good uh, you know it's uh, higher than some of the Navi cards which is pretty good for a system on chip so we'll see for that but I think possibly by the time we get to M uh, M2X is probably when we will see them starting to rival those. As I say though, the pure uh, brute force of these chips could be great. It also depends on the game manufacturers for actually optimising for Apple Silicon too. Hopefully that answers your question, but I think maybe next year. So one other thing I wanted to um, actually just shout out in today's video is that this afternoon, I believe it's at 2pm GMT, 2pm UTC, that the Starship, uh, Elon Musk's SpaceX Starship, is looking to do their first um, 15 kilometer hop with a called belly flop maneuver where it kind of uses atmospheric braking to stop and then flips to land. Um, that's when the uh, launch window opens. I think it closes at like 11 at night or something, um, UTC. So it could be a long wait, but I would definitely keep your eyes open. I will be watching that uh, if at all possible live. I am a huge space nerd as well as being really into my Apple stuff and uh, yeah this is going to be a big one. It's going to be a good one and uh, Elon only gives it about a 30% chance of landing successfully so it could be a really cool explosion if nothing else. But that's how I'll be spending my afternoon. If you're going to be watching that too let me know down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe, like the video and ring the bell so that you don't miss a thing and thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one.